Today we're here to talk about the RTX Virtual Network Add-on. And so this new tool is not only helpful for existing customers, but it's especially helpful for new customers who are currently using complex proprietary hardware to solve their real-time needs. So this video will be broken into two parts. First, we'll go over an overall context overview of why we think this new tool is so valuable. And then the second part, we'll go over some instructional how-to of how to install and configure the RTX virtual network add-on. So if you look here, this is typically what we see in a lot of real-time applications. So here on the left-hand side, we have the Windows PC where you have your user interface or HMI. You have a TCP IP stack and then of course a network interface card. And then over here in the real-time subsystem, here you'll find typically DSPs and FPGAs. This is where the real-time application is running. There's an equivalent TCP IP stack. And then here's another network interface card. And of course, in between, you have an Ethernet cable. So while this is a very capable and competent real-time system, there's a lot of complexity and cost that can be actually eliminated. So one example is this hardware that's in between. This is usually not necessary, especially when you move to a system that's leveraging Windows and RTX. And then, of course, this proprietary hardware is, is a challenging because you have separate code bases for both your real-time and non-real-time needs. So, as you move over into a Windows and RTX based platform, the great thing is, of course, you notice is we've able to get rid of the DSPs and FPGAs, fully leveraging Intel and AMD's multi-core x86 uh, as far as components. And then we're inside of a single chassis. Of course, you still have this network interface cards and Ethernet cable. You can use that. However, this is some added cost that we're able to get rid of. And we're able to get rid of that with the addition of the virtual network add-on. So what this new tool is and why it's so valuable is we're able to add virtual representations of these network interface cards as well as a driver for communications. So this replaces that hardware, the Ethernet cable, and the physical network interface cards, all which are software implementation. And this allows you, as you're porting over your existing applications, to fully leverage all the investments you've made using socket connections between your user interface and your real-time applications. So again, great value in getting rid of the DSPs and FPGAs, and also getting rid of the physical cards for the network interfaces as well as the Ethernet cable, all with by using the virtual network add-on on an RTX-based platform. Okay. So again, the goals of this is two part. One, we're gonna simplify the porting efforts for new customers so you're able to fully leverage and take advantage of all your existing code base as you move your real-time applications over to Windows and RTX, leveraging all your socket communications, not having to rewrite any of those. And then for existing customers, we're providing you with a new communications method and for any type of messaging or communications you might want between your Windows and your real-time applications under RTX. Okay? So what we'll go over next is the setup and, and a quick demonstration. So we'll go through the installation, we'll configure the virtual network add-on, and then we'll run a client-server example to validate and make sure everything is working. And then coming back to this diagram here, the one thing I want to show in the setup is we're going to be setting up the virtual network interface cards with two unique IP addresses. So the way this virtual network add-on works is you have to speak to these virtual NICs. You cannot access the real hardware NICs, so I need to point that out. And you need to have two unique IP addresses. One over here on the Windows side for the RTX applications to talk to, and then one unique one on the RTX side for any Windows applications that need to talk to the real-time side. And then finally, we'll run a client-server example with the server being on the Windows side. Of course, this can be inverted, but it really doesn't matter. In our case, we're going to have the client on the RTX side. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So in order to get the virtual network adapter or add-on, it goes by either name, here you'll go to the intervalzero.com website and under RTX updates, if you scroll down, here you'll see the RTX 2012 virtual network add-on. Okay, so let's go ahead and download it. I went ahead and downloaded it and inside of the zip file will be two files. So first one is the readme. So a lot of the what the contents of what I'll be going over today is inside of this readme document. So I encourage you to take a look at it. And also here's the installer. So let's go ahead and launch the installer. So let's go ahead and run it. This will take a, a minute or two. So 
I might just fast forward through the installation process here. So here we'll click Next, Install. Here's our status. So here we'll go ahead, it says uh, security warning, we'll go ahead and install this driver. And so for the sake of time, I've kind of time elapsed things. Overall, this installation should take no more than two minutes. And so let's go ahead and click Finish. And that's it. So the, the driver or the virtual network add-on is actually installed now. So let's go ahead and configure things. Here's Windows Explorer, and the way you get to the configuration file is in your C directory. This is the standard install path. Under Program Files, Interval 0, RTX, slash bin, here you'll see the RTX TCP IP dot INI file. So if you double click and open that up, it's just a simple text file. And here you have some default configurations. So there's a, there's a couple changes we'll want to make here. And the first thing we'll want to do is you see the number of interfaces here. We'll go ahead and change this from 0 to 1. So we're actually going to be using one interface because if you leave it at 0 it's just a loopback. And we'll go ahead and change this driver. By default they put in one of the Intel uh, drivers there. We're going to actually change this to the virtual network adapter so its name is of the drivers RT virtual NIC there we go and then here's the IP address so remember on the RTX side we want 10.10.1.5 and then the subnets need to match between both the RTX virtual adapter as well as the Windows one so here we want 255.255 .255 that two five five dot zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. All right, and so now let's go over to the Windows side of things and configure the static IP address over there. So there's multiple ways to get to the Windows adapter. Of course, we want you can go to Control Panels. You can go under Network and Internet. And here you can see network status here, and then here I go under change on adapter settings. So if you look, let's go ahead and change the view a little bit. You'll see what's been installed on the Windows side here under this local area connection 12. You see here's the virtual uh, Windows Virtual RTX Ethernet adapter. Okay, so we'll go ahead and right click on this and click properties and we'll go to want to configure IPv4 so Internet Protocol version 4 let's go ahead and highlight that, that click properties and we're gonna want to set this up statically so use the following IP address so it's 10.10.1.6 okay so we went ahead and configured that and again the subnets need to match 255.255 there we go okay click OK. Let's go ahead and open up the RTX properties and this is the final step and everything and if you go under TCP IP we're going to enable TCP IP support so this essentially is saying that we're going to use that RTX TCP IP INI file that we configured and go ahead and click apply click OK here this will take a moment just to register Okay, and then we'll go ahead and start everything. So as you see here under the control tab in the, in the RTX properties, everything has been halted. We'll go ahead and start things. And just want to bring you here. As things are starting up, here you can see all of a sudden there's changes happening to the Windows Virtual RTX Ethernet adapter. So now it actually went from disabled, it's enabled, and this is normal, I should point out. Don't be alarmed. It says unidentified network. So this is just something with Windows. It just does not fully understand what this is, but it's fine. It will be functional. Okay. So now everything is running, and here under the control panel, you can see everything's running, including the RTX TCP IP stack. Now that we've properly configured our virtual network adapter, we are going to now run a client-server example to then once and for all prove that everything is working correctly. So here we're going to run the server on the Windows side and the client on the RTX side. Of course, you can have these inverted. It really doesn't matter. But one thing, again, it should point out is that we're going to use these static IP addresses. The virtual network adapter can only work with the virtual Ethernet adapters. You cannot address or talk to a physical adapter that could be inside of your PC. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started.
So I should point out too that because this is using the virtual adapters, the, the adapter still looks like a standard Ethernet adapter. So this is impacted or affected by the firewalls of Windows. So you will want to go into your control panel and here I'm under control panel system security Windows firewall and customize settings and I've turned off the firewall okay so once that's turned off now we'll go ahead and run the example here I have two command windows open and as you can see they're both pointing to the same directory so it's in the C program files interval 0 RTX slash bin folder and this is where you will find both the server examples, so here are the pre-built executables for the server, here's the Windows version, here's the RTX version, and up at the top here, here are the clients, again Windows and an RTX version. Okay, so let's go ahead and start things. So here on the Windows side, we're going to run RTX TCP server.exe. And so now you can see it's listening on the socket. And here on the RTX side, we're going to do RTSS run, which you must do when you run any RTX application from a Windows prompt. And here's the client.rtss. And here is the static IP address for the Windows side Ethernet adapter. So this is the virtual adapter on the Windows side, 10.10.1.6. Okay? And we'll go ahead and hit enter and you can see it started and you can see it's it's talking back and forth now so you can see it's listening on a port here are the packets that are processed here on the RTX server this is the standard out window for RTX you can see a little more data the transmit speeds the average the rate and you can see that it was successful so as you've just seen, it's quite straightforward and easy to install and configure the virtual network add-on. So for new customers, this will ease your transition as you move from your current platforms over into a Windows and RTX-based system, still leveraging all your socket communications. And for those of you already using RTX, it provides you with a nice new API for any communications you might have between your HMI and your real-time applications. So hopefully you found this video informative, and please check out our website for any additional tutorials that might help you during your development. Thank you for your time.